Um, it's really my honor and privilege to have Lisa here with us. And, and I'm glad that the, the Honorable Ambassador's back also to listen to Lisa. Thank you, Ambassador, you're back. Lisa, um, Lisa is the Development Director um, at the British Embassy in Nepal. And before the merger of DFID into the FCDO, she was the head of DFID country office in Nepal um, with the responsibility of running the office and its, all its programs that we have in Nepal. She has a long and distinguished service with the FCO, DFID and o ODA. Since 2008, Lisa has been working with DFID in a range of senior board positions. She was the first ever woman appointed to a substantive role when she became the 55th, 55th governor of St. Helena. So for all of us with uh, the back British lineage, we probably know how to, what a great position that is, uh, she has enjoyed. So Lisa, uh, without any further delay, I'd like you to please uh, uh, talk a little bit about your perspective, Lisa, and how you see uh, this thing evolving. And thanks, thanks for being here. Okay, well, thanks very much, um, Bauti, and great to see everybody. I must say this has been such a fascinating uh, discussion for me because as Belgit said, I do have a passion about migration. Um, you know, I think uh, for myself, but obviously the UK line is um, that we do believe that migration can be a real force for development. Um, I, I would say that in many, many countries that isn't necessarily shared by um, the government of those countries and often not actually even its citizens. I would count Nepal in one of those countries. I, I think um, Nepal government sees migration more as a failure of development. Um, rather than a force for good. But I, I think bear in mind that just in the latest uh, emergency brought about by COVID and the impact that that had on the economy, it was remittances that actually held up, um, even though migrants came back from uh, the Gulf and it was remittances that did not tail off and therefore um, the economy did not, although uh, the outlook is not great for, for poor households, it was remittances that uh, continued to come. I think that says a lot about uh, how migration can, can be this force for good. Um, I remember some time ago when this debate started, could migration be a force uh, for development, the World Bank did some analysis um, and it, it showed that if in obviously industrialized countries spend a lot of money in keeping migrants out um, because of this mix between economic migration, asylum seeking for uh, etc. And they calculated that if industrialized countries just brought down the barriers against migration by 4% that we could solve world, world poverty, basically, with the savings that were made. So I think that's just such a stark uh, statistic about how uh, the world is not making um, the best of migration. You know, and we know why, don't we? It's all around the politics. Um, uh, goods and services and uh, goods moving is all fine. People moving, not quite so. Um, you know, I'm always come back to that statistic about a thousand Nepalese die, unfortunately, about a thousand migrant Nepalese die, unfortunately, every year. And I think that's really quite shocking. It goes back again to the fact I think the government doesn't value um the what migrants bring um and they don't uh they're not assertive enough in in mobilizing them so that they can get the best out of them when they do go and as um uh someone said you know the philippines are masters at this and ditto uh bangladesh and i do believe that nepal's got really a lot 
of progress to be made to even get near some of those other countries in the way that they treat their migrants. Um, as Duty said, we are trying to make inroads as uh, the UK into some of this. Um, and it's been great to hear everybody talk about basically ethical uh, uh, recruitment and wanting to really encourage uh, more women and encourage um, safe migration and get a, a fair deal. And what Stuti has said is, you know, we are open for business as the UK through the SEP program for more innovative finance products um, and uh, upskilling of migrants uh, before they go. Particularly pleased to see City and Guilds in in this conversation as well, because Nepal does have to raise itself above others and say that they have something else uh, to offer and um, something like city and girls and certification will go a long way towards that. So I think just from our point of view, you know, we're really pleased to see this uh, starting and having impact. Um, we won't, we're not just a funder, of course. Um, I think there's a number of things that we can do um, for example, this policy around Nepali women, we pushed for the legislation to be changed because uh, the evidence showed that uh, the legislation was not stopping Nepali women under a certain age from going. It was actually pushing them into more illegal routes. Um, we do have a program that's around trafficking, um, but you know that policy and law was doing more harm than good for women migrants. Um, I think you know we can help um, companies, as has been discussed here, see migrants more as a good investment. You know, and part of their USP from the pool is they know the Gulf. Um, and as others have said, you know, they are hardworking um, and committed. Um, so we can, you know, we can support that. I think the bilateral agreements, uh, which we are helping to draw up, is a big way to get um, uh, the ethical side really sorted out. Migrants need to know where they go if they're in trouble. They need to know what they can expect and those bilateral agreements are really very important and you know great to hear that the ambassador from UAE is on the case for getting that one signed. We would be very happy to have a meeting to see if there was anything more that we could do through our own network as the UK uh, to help that happen. Um, we can help with policies, we can help with legislation, I think that there's something around circular migration in Nepal because um, going out, coming back, going out again is all difficult. We know that that happens in many, many countries, but other countries have put in place measures in policies that will ease that. I think that the diaspora, well, once migrants are abroad, there is a role, I think, for government of Nepal to keep in touch with them. Um, of course, they are the voters when they come home. Uh, they are the potential investors when they come home. They will, of course, be keeping in touch with um, their home country through relatives. But look at what India do, did with um, non-resident Indians and they offered diaspora bonds so that they could invest back in the country as they had um, money that they could do that with. So I think there's a huge potential. Um, and, you know, to, just to really, um, this, this vision of migrants uh, is like it's a failure. We need to change the, the narrative around that 
going out and sending money back to your country is a positive. Um, you know, look at the Gurkhas, for example, and the way that they're held uh, in, in Nepali esteem. Um, and we, so we need to shift that sort of the way that migrants are thought of easier said than done, I do realize. So I, I will finish there, but just one further reflection. Balji, you mentioned at the beginning, the Global Forum for Migration. And I, for a few years, I, at the very beginning of that, I was the UK representative to that at the time oh. when P Peter Sutherland was the DG of that global forum. He died a couple of years ago and he was previously the uh, DG of WTO, which says a lot, I think, about uh, the transfer between WTO and how the global community was wanting to see migration. Um, I, what I would say is the discussion we've had today is really has really moved on from those old days because that was all we were we were almost talking amongst uh, uh, the converted. We knew that to, that migration was a, a good force for development, but we couldn't just find the levers. So here. What I see is a really good discussion with other governments and employers about how we can push through and do that. I think in Nepal, um, it's the government that needs to be brought on board a bit more. Um, but I do think we'll get there in the end, simply because it's inevitable. Um, the, you know, the aging population in the West means that migrants will forever be needed and so it is the how we get from here to there that we are we need to pay particular attention to as you've all said migrants are not just arms and legs they are an investment for countries futures so i've been really heartened by this conversation and it's sort of just been so positive to hear it. So thank you for inviting me. <laughs>